Hey, it's Matt. I'm here in Bosnia and Herzegovina where I'm traveling for the next 10 days. I'm starting off here in Sarajevo, which is the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, to be honest, besides hearing about Bosnia because of the war, I don't really know that much about the country. So really excited to find out. And here in Sarajevo, I'm kicking things off with a free walking tour by Funky Tours. So come on, let's go. And while we're at it, I'm going to show you 13 of the best things you can see and do in two days in Sarajevo. We start here in Basharshia, the oldest part of Sarajevo dating back to the 15th century. One of the oldest streets here is the Coppersmith Street, which will take you back to the Ottoman Empire when Sarajevo was founded. Top tip, they make a great souvenir from Bosnia, or you can just watch one of these master craftsmen at work. One of my favorite things when traveling is getting to sample the local food and one of the most traditional Bosnian dishes is pita, which is a baked filled pastry. Uh, this is the first walking tour I've been on where they've actually given us some food and we're going to try some Bosnian brek. What's the verdict? This taste of... Uh... Another Bosnian dish you have to try is chivapi, which is a type of grilled mincemeat kebab. Bosnian chavapi, chavapti, like a little kebab and pali, the authentic way is no sauce, just onions. Oh. So all that food needs something to wash it down, so it's a great time for you to try the local Sarajevsko beer at the traditional tavern right next to the brewery. So it's 11.45, we are in Sarajevska Pivnica and after we've had Burek, after we've had Chivapi, so it's obviously time for a beer. Chivili. Chivili. Did I mention that I am still on the free walking tour by Funky Tours and yes, we've not had to pay for any of this so far. We do of course see many sites around the city, but I didn't really want to film the entire tour. But don't worry, keep watching and we'll come back to some key spots that you should check out in just a bit. And to finish off this free walking tour by Funky Tours, we are back at Funky Tours and Adnan, our guide, is slaving away in the kitchen making us some traditional Bosnian coffee. Yeah. Moment of truth. Yes. And it's I'm not nervous, I'm just, this is happening. So was it? Dip the corner dip it, of that. Dip it, dip get it, get a corner, taste it, a little taste break it, it off, it. and now stick the coffee. Mm. Mm. It's okay actually. Like it they is. just gotta mix this in your mouth. So yes. sugar. sugar hey. are, are, are you kidding me? <laughs> People should visit Sarajevo because a beautiful city, uh, beautiful food, beautiful women, beautiful men, as as I am. <laughs> so yeah, welcome and. Uh, yeah. Funky tour, you can have some funky time with us. Yeah. Uh, but of course, it wasn't always funky times in Sarajevo. The siege of Sarajevo started in April, 6th April 92, and it took place in the next less than four years. The initial goal was actually to expel all Sarajevo people from the city to make them surrender so in a certain point they can overtake it and make it a part of Serbian nationalism idea of greater Serbia. We own this country, this is our country. One of the best places where you can learn about the siege of Sarajevo is at the Tunnel of Hope Museum by the airport. In these places, these are called Sarajevo Roses. So basically, wherever someone was killed, we marched to that place actually, killed and injured. So the only possible way to in and out to, to the city was through the tunnel. So we're just going through these uh, replica tunnels of when in the siege uh, they used to carry supplies over. I guess it's a little bit cleaner but still a little bit uncomfortable uh, and the real one was over 800 meters so uh, let's go. And if underground was where hope for Sarajevans was, up high on Mount Trebovich is where the Serb forces rained terror in the form of artillery upon the city. 
Today, I guess you might find it as an Instagrammable spot with the abandoned Olympic bobsled, uh, but I think it's worth remembering the terror that this place used to cause as well. Also on Mount Trebovich is the 16th century Jewish cemetery, but here too it was used by the Serb snipers inflicting horrors on the people of Sarajevo. Back in town, on the other hand, Kavachi Cemetery is where Bosnians killed during the conflict are buried. From there, you can also walk up to the Yellow Bastion, which has the most amazing panoramic view of the city. If you're wondering why it looks like winter time, that's because I messed up my own footage and had to borrow someone else's. Oops. Well, it's day two here in Sarajevo and as you can see the sky is a little bit more grey than I would have liked so uh, my plans to go exploring outside. I think I'm going to change them, go to a museum instead like this one behind me dedicated to the genocide in Srebrenica which uh, admittedly I know quite little about so uh, hopefully you learn some more uh, about this incident. In July 1995, more than 8,000 Bosnian Muslims in Srebrenica were killed by Bosnian Serb forces. Their leader, General Mladic, was later found guilty of war crimes and genocide. Well, that was uh, quite a, maybe a bit of depressing experience, but I think when you visit a place, it's important not just to see what's what's around today, uh, experience all the wonderful things, of course, but also to learn a little bit about the history of what shapes the country, what shapes the people. And with Bosnia, I guess most people know uh, war, genocide, uh, siege, that, that's the kind of thing that's been in very recent times that shapes the people. Going even further back in history, though, there's another major war that Sarajevo was involved in, which started here. I'm still now here in front of the Latin Bridge in Sarajevo. Uh, the bridge itself is fairly unremarkable except for this little thing that happened which triggered World War I. That was the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, Archduke of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, which actually happened not on the bridge itself, but just in front of me, around the corner. So I'm nearly at the end of my second and final day here in Sarajevo before going to explore the rest of Bosnia. Uh, it's been pretty grey today and I was hoping the weather would improve but it hasn't really. It's still a little bit cloudy but no rain. I am going to head up to Mount Trebovic uh, to have a view of Sarajevo from up high and I'm going to ride this cable car which is right beside me. So come on, let's go. Did I mention I love cable cars? And I've got the car all to myself, which is probably the first time in a very long time I've managed to ride the cable car by myself, but look at that view. So I'm back here now at the Olympic bobsled track. Uh, the weather is completely different to when I was here yesterday and what a difference a day makes. Uh, now it's really eerie and pretty much the only person wandering around here. And of course the venue here was not just a venue for glory for the Olympic Games where, which Sarajevo hosted, but it was also a place on the mountain where the Serbian army used to fire missiles down during the siege of Sarajevo. So a very mixed feeling and I think that's a very mixed feeling from the two days I've been here as well. So I've come to the end of the abandoned bobsled track. Uh, Google Maps says there's an abandoned tower around here, so I'm going to try it before it gets too dark.
honest. I was a little bit nervous, but not too bad. Uh, the, the stairs have no railings on the side of them, so uh, try not to be too close to the edge, but view from up here is definitely amazing. Wish it was a sunny day, wish I'd come here earlier today, but hey, such is life, right? Cool little spots, glad I found it, but it's getting dark and I still need to make my way back up to the cable car, so time to go. I'm alive! I made it back down that mountain, uh, although it was getting pretty dark when I made my way up that bobsled track again. Uh, very helpfully, I bumped into a bunch of guys from Slovenia who were doing a road trip and they very kindly gave me a lift down. So thanks a lot guys. I am now embarking onto the rest of my adventure in Bosnia. I'm going solo, so I've got you guys to keep me company, right? Do give the video a like and if you're not already subscribed, do subscribe to my channel and follow me on my adventures around the world. Oh, uh, one other thing, leave me a comment as well. Let me know what you think of Bosnia, anything I should know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.